Hello everyone and welcome to another installment of my series Machine Spotlight where we take a closer look at some of the new and returning machines in Horizon Forbidden West. Today we will be shining the spotlight on the Stormbird, a returning machine initially introduced in Horizon Zero Dawn. The Stormbird most closely resembles a giant eagle or falcon with large wings and fearsome talons. The Stormbird is the largest of the flying machines followed by the Dreadwing, Sunwing, Sky Drifter, and Glint Hawk. It was initially created by Gaia and Hephaestus to aid in the terraforming of Earth's atmosphere, however after the derangement, it has been repurposed as a deadly aerial combat machine. In this video, I will cover important information such as its locations, weak points, combat strategies, and more. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. Let's get started by covering its locations on the map. The Stormbird is a very rare machine with only one designated machine site on the map. That site is located in the northern ruins of San Francisco. Here you will find a lone Stormbird perched upon the Golden Gate Bridge near a downed Horus. When you approach the area, the Stormbird will leave its perch to face you in combat. There are no other machines in the immediate vicinity, however there is a slaughter spine nearby. The only other machine site is unmarked, located in the snow-covered mountains south of the Bulwark. Here you will find a Stormbird as well as a Dreadwing, making for a great farming site for Stormbird Storm Cannons and Dreadwing Metal Fangs to upgrade your gear. The site is littered with barrels of Blaze that you can use to help take down the machines. Next, we'll take a look at the machine catalog entry for the Stormbird and its variants. Stormbird, a level 30 combat heavyweight machine, a mighty combat machine that embodies the power of storms, capable of flying at high altitudes, diving at breakneck speeds, and deadly melee and shock attacks. The Stormbird is weak versus acid and plasma damage, and strong versus fire and shock damage. Notable loot includes sparker, crystal braiding, metal shards, large machine core, Stormbird Circulator, Stormbird Primary Nerve, Volatile Sludge, Machine Muscle, Braided Wire, Luminous Brainstem, Metal Bone, and Sturdy Hard Plate. Now let's take a look at the data point for the only other variant of the Stormbird, the Apex Stormbird. Apex Stormbird, a level 46 combat heavyweight machine, a hunter-killer variant recognizable by black and gold armor plates and purple muscles. It has been modified to be significantly more resilient and deadly. It cannot be overridden. The Apex Stormbird is weak versus acid and plasma damage, and strong versus fire, frost, and shock damage. It has much of the same loot dropped by a regular variant, however, it does add Apex Stormbird hearts. Other key differences to note are the replacement of acid canisters where the regular variant's chill water canisters were, as well as glow blast canisters in place of the regular variant's purge water canisters. Now, let's study the Stormbird's few weak points so that you can get the upper hand in battle. Six wing thrusters line the Stormbird's wings, which it uses to gain additional speed. Either detach or destroy all six in order to disable its dive bomb attack. The Storm Cannon acts as a powerful lightning generator. Detach or destroy to disable its ranged shock attacks. Upon destroying or tearing it off, it will explode and briefly immobilize the Stormbird. I would recommend detaching it since it is a key upgrade resource. Purge water canisters lie just above its hips. Tear them off to collect the resource or shoot with the purge water arrow to detonate and inflict the drenched state. I found the best way to do this was to wait just after it dive bombs so that you can get a clear shot. Chill water canisters lie just above its shoulders. They are shielded by metal plates. First, detach the metal plates and then either detach the canister to collect the resource or shoot with the frost arrow to detonate and inflict the brittle state. Next, let's familiarize ourselves with the Stormbird's various attacks, both ranged and melee. The Stormbird is capable of utilizing its storm cannon in a carpet bomb style attack. Dodge out of the way and avoid the ground where it hits as it does stay electrified. It can also charge the Storm Cannon for a single powerful shock attack, or a series of three lesser shock attacks. If you see it fly up into the sky, or if you lose sight of it completely, stay on guard as it is preparing to use its devastating dive bomb attack. 
Once on the ground, the Stormbird can charge up its shock cannon to create a shocking electrical field. The best way to avoid this is to simply run and dodge out of the way as quickly as possible. It uses its thrusters to create a blast of air to knock you back and gain some distance. It sweeps its tail around for a devastating electrical whip attack that it retracts back into place. Dodge to avoid its powerful shocking beak attack. And watch out as it jumps to swipe at you with its massive talons. By reviewing its weak points and attacks, you should be able to take down a Stormbird with ease. The Stormbird can indeed be overridden once you have cleared the Kappa Cauldron and received its overrides, and the override will be available to use instantaneously. I will now demonstrate overriding a Stormbird in the wild. The best method I found was to wait for it to use its dive bomb attack, then use a smoke bomb to disorient it. We're of course gonna set it to aggressive. Let's see how it fares against the nearby Slaughter Spine. The wing thrust is powerful enough to topple a machine as large as a slaughter spine. Impressive. The Stormbird even noticed a red eye watcher that had snuck up on me. Since the last slaughter spine wasn't able to land a single hit, let's try a rematch. It's already not looking good for the Slaughter Spine. But at least it's able to land a few good hits. Well, the Stormbird has bested the Slaughter Spine two for three. Now, let's see how it does against a Dreadwing. The Dreadwing was able to land a few attacks, but it was still no match for our overridden Stormbird. Given that the Stormbird was able to easily take out a Slaughter Spine and Dreadwing, it's safe to say that it's a very useful override. And with that, we conclude this installment of Machine Spotlight, where we took a closer look at the Stormbird. Tell me what you think of the Stormbird in the comments below. I still remember the wonder I felt reaching Dawn Sentinel, entering Karja territory, and seeing the massive Stormbird in the distance for the first time in Horizon Zero Dawn. And seeing the Stormbird atop the Golden Gate Bridge brought that feeling back. I hope you were able to learn something new from this video that makes it easier for you to take on a Stormbird yourself. I want to personally thank every one of my amazing subscribers. At the time of recording for this video, I have just hit 500 subscribers and just over three and a half thousand hours of watch time. I am truly overwhelmed with the support I have been given and I hope I continue to deserve that support. I am resuming school this week, so I may not be able to upload quite as frequently, but I already have more machine spotlights in the works, including spotlights on the Rollerback, Grimhorn, and more. If you're new to this channel and like the video, click the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Once again, I'm Noxious Asp. Thanks for watching.